بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد سورة الفيل is a Meccan surah by consensus as Imam Al-Qurtubi mentioned uh, the name of the surah is Al-Fil or Alam Tara uh, in the majority of the books of Tafsir it was revealed after Surah Al-Kafirun and before Al-Falaq regarding the reason of revelation there is no reason of revelation although it's addressing or talking about a certain sto uh, story which is the story of the elephant but that's not the reason of revelation because the event of the elephant was something that took place before the Prophet 40 years before the Prophet وسلم, was commissioned as a messenger Allah says Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel have you not seen, O Muhammad, how your Lord dealt with the owners of the elephant? Now let's break this down a bit. Alam tara. Have you not seen? How could he have seen? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it's something that took place the year he was born. Now, the uh, people of, of Arabia had over the decades, over the years, continuously spoken about the story of the elephant in details, one generation of, after the other, until, and these were conveyed from eyewitnesses, until it became to everyone who heard these details, as if he is actually himself witnessed the event or the incident. It, it was so famous of, a, of an incident that uh, things were dated according to it. The Prophet's birth, alayhi salatu was was said to be, he was born, born on the year of the elephant. Or oh, such and such a thing happened a year after the incident of the elephant. Or oh, a couple of years before the year of the elephant. It was a milestone in people's lives. Very important event. And it, indeed it was as we will see in the details. Allah Azza wa Jal did not say, Alam tara what? What happened? No details were given. Why? Simply because these details were known to people. Who these people of the elephant were, where they came from and why they came. And what was their attempt? What were they trying to do? All of these details were known to people. So there is no need to mention that. Allah Azza wa did not exclude that from being mentioned. كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ How your Lord did. Attributing the deed or the action to Allah is an indication that what had happened to these people is something that none but Allah can do. And again, we will see the details of that. بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ who are Ashabul Fil? The people or the owners of the elephant. This was an army that uh, came from Yemen under the leadership of the uh, Abyssinian king. His name was Abraha ibn Sabbah. And he was uh, the ruler over Yemen. He had decided to come and demolish the Kaaba. And he brought a huge army uh, to fight the Arabs if they were to stand against him. Uh, and he was supported by the king of Abyssinia himself, who sent him a huge elephant to support his army. And it was said that he had six other elephants uh, with him as well. Why was he uh, 
planning to demolish uh, and tear down the Kaaba. Well, uh, he became, he was a Christian, Abraha was a Christian, and he became intimidated, upset about people going to perform pilgrimage to the Kaaba. So he wanted to do something else. He wanted to divert people from Mecca to Yemen. So he built a house, a church, identical in look to the Kaaba. But it was something amazing. No one had seen before, the like of which. So when the Arabs saw that, they became frustrated. They became extremely angry. So one of them from the tribe of Malik ibn Kinana decided to take revenge against Abraha. So he entered that house and defecated there. And not only that, he took that and smeared the walls with the filth, right? And left. So when uh, Abraha found out, he decided, this is not tolerable. I've got to go and demolish this Kaaba for which this man did this. So he did what he did and he took off towards Mecca. When he reached, reached a, a valley, it's a vast valley, a huge valley called Al-Mughammas. It was, a, it's adjacent to the boundaries of Arafah, right? When he reached there, the huge elephant stopped. Now this is outside the boundaries of the Haram, the sanctity of Mecca. The elephant stopped. So the trainer or the keeper of the elephant started poking him to move. He wouldn't. When they would face him towards Mecca, he would kneel down. When they turned him around towards Yemen, who would, he would stand up and start running. And then they turned him around again and start facing him towards Mecca. He would kneel down and refuse to move forward. And this was a sign from Allah Azza wa Jal. And, but these people did not take heed of this. So they remained until Allah Azza wa Jal sent down his punishment. Allah goes on to say, أَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ كَيْدَهُمْ فِي تَضْلِيلِ Did he not make their plan to demolish the Kaaba into misguidance, causing them to perish? This was the result of this army. This army entirely perished. They were, they were all dead. Allah Azza wa Jal did not make their plans go through. And in this, Allah, in this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal is reminding Quraysh. Now, this Quran is was revealed by Muhammad, by revealed to Muhammad sallallahu to address the Quraysh with it and the Arabs. Allah is reminding them with that incident forty years ago, forty some years ago. Allah Azza wa Jal conferred His favor upon you by protecting you against this humongous army with this huge elephant that you've never seen the like of which before. Allah Azza wa Jal protected the house from this strong army whilst you were weak. The Arabs did not move, did not attempt, did not even intend to protect the Kaaba. What they did is that they fled. They left the area and went up into the mountains surrounding Mecca. And Abu Talib said, uh, Abdul Muttalib said, this, this house has a Lord. It's the, it's the house of Allah and He will protect it. We cannot confront this huge army of Abraha. Allah Azza wa Jal is reminding them with this, perhaps they would take heed and stop harassing the believers persecuting the believers and preventing the message of Allah Azza wa Jal from going through and reaching others. 
طَيْرًا أَبَابِينَ Allah here is depicting the story. It's an illustration now. What happened? Allah sent on them or against them birds in flocks. The, the birds, the type or the shape of the birds was something that the Arabs have never seen before. Qatada said they were black birds and they came from the side of the sea, the Red Sea. That's the only sea that's there anyways, close to Mecca. It's the Red Sea. Ababil, Al-Bukhari said, they were collective and successive flocks of birds. Huge amounts, huge numbers. Tarmihim bihijaratim min sijjil. Striking them with stones of hard clay. Qatada rahmatullah alayhi said, each bird had three rocks or stones. One in each leg and one held by its beak or in its beak. And whenever these stones would strike anything, it would smash it, completely smash it. Ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhuma said, Allah Azza wa Jal, to add, to increase the intensity of the punishment, sent a wind in the direction of the stones, to increase the speed of the stones when they strike the person or the, the animals. They said the, the, the stone would hit the man in his head and it would depart from the end of his back, the end of his spine, from here, penetrating through all the way and it goes from the other end. And then when it strikes his body, if it strikes his body, it would burn his body completely. A'udhu Billah. What a punishment. And when it hit the elephant or any other animal, it would go through its body and penetrate through the ground itself as fast and powerful as it was. فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ and he, Allah the Almighty, had made them like eating straw. Meaning, the result of this striking of, of stones made these human beings and animals appear like, have you ever seen leaves that have been chewed by, a, by an animal? Right? You see how totally disfigured they are and smashed they are and torn into small bits and pieces. Allah Azza wa Jal in the story of the, the elephant, Al-Feel, is reminding Quraysh of his power and ability and that his command is Kun Fayakun. Be and it is. He's reminding them with the thing that they know very well because as we said, it was conveyed so much and too many times to the event that people were as if they were eyewitnesses to it. So Allah is reminding them to say that if you continue to be tyrants, deny the message, Go against the revelation of the one who protected you. He is capable of doing to you as he did to them. As the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, Allah gives respite to the oppressor and the tyrant until he seizes him. And when Allah seizes him, he will never release him. Meaning, there will be no escape from the punishment of Allah when Allah Azza wa Jal wills it to happen. With this, we conclude Surah Al-Fil.
and uh, we will speak about Surah Quraysh in the following session, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahum bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.